The next story was inspired by a short, disturbing clip online of a man in a sauna. We don't want to give too many details away, so let the animation speak for itself. Here's what it looked like. Back in the year 2020, I used to go to this really run-down gym for all my workouts. It wasn't the best of places, but in the beginning, it had its perks, mainly because it was cheap. The membership was a very small fee compared to the fortune that other places charge. I was in my early 20s at the time, so I was very stingy with my money. I got my friend to hop on the bandwagon too, and together we would usually meet up after work at around 10 p.m. The other benefit of this gym was that it was open 24-7, and it was usually deserted besides myself, my friend, and the guy at the front desk. That guy wasn't a very watchful employee. He would always wear these Dre headphones over his ears and blast music into his brain, or watch TikToks on his phone the entire shift. All he would do to greet us was just throw up a lazy peace sign and mumble something like, Uh, welcome. What's up, my man? Working hard as usual, huh? Not as hard as your mother on the pole. What did you just say? Come on, man. Let's just work out. We always had the whole place to ourselves, and they even had a sauna. Aside from that, the chill vibe made up for the admittedly rather outdated equipment. My friend and I usually spotted each other on the heavier sets, but otherwise we would do our own individual exercises. I usually liked ending my workouts in the sauna. I remember changing in the locker room before stepping foot inside the sauna that night and began letting the hot steam heat up my body allowing me to sweat more. It had been a long day, so I was quickly on the verge of dozing off. Of course, I knew it wasn't a good idea to fall asleep in there, so I always kept myself awake. After drifting off into a sort of half-conscious state from how relaxing it was, I had lost track of how long I was actually in there for. It must have been during that time in which I was half awake, half asleep, when I heard the guy from the front desk walking by, running the vacuum cleaner. Seemingly, a second later, I heard what sounded like a single knock on the door to the sauna. I jolted awake into a bit of delirium brought on by the heat and the sleepiness. I almost got up to open the door, but then I heard my friend calling out on the other side. When I heard my friend's voice, I assumed he was having small talk with the guy at the front desk, so I decided to stay for another 10 or 15 minutes, then head home. The guy at the front desk was supposed to get off at midnight, and at that point, the gym would be unattended until the morning. Like I said before, the gym was run down and didn't have any set rules and regulations. Well, at least not until what happened to me. After sitting in the sauna for a few more minutes, I began to doze off yet again. I really had no idea how much time had passed before I woke up and realized that I was extremely hot and disoriented. I remember seeing my body drenched and a small puddle of sweat forming before my feet. A small shot of panic wrenched me right up from the bench, but then I was immediately stricken with a head rush so bad that I nearly passed out and cracked my head open. I managed to hold myself up by grabbing a hold of the door handle but it wasn't moving. And then it hit me when I came to the grim realization that the sauna door had been locked from the outside. I knew the front desk guy had more than likely departed the building, which faced me with the grim reality that I was going to get cooked. I was going to get cooked alive. Oh crap, oh god, come on, come on! I didn't have anything on except a pair of boxers and a sauna towel. I had left everything, including my phone, in a locker. The door was locked from the outside and there was no way I could unlock it or pick the lock. There wasn't even a window for me to break through. It was just a solid hunk of a door. <sighs> Come on, I need to get out. Someone, someone get me out of this thing! Help! Help! I gave my all trying to break the door handle. I didn't even know what I was trying to do, and no matter how hard I strained it, it wouldn't budge. When I finally realized that wasn't working, I resorted to just trying to break it down completely. I stepped back and charged for it, slamming myself into the door. It sent shockwaves into my brain, but I still tried it again, and again, and again, and again. Then, when that didn't work, I just kept banging my fists to no avail. Help! I'm trapped in here! Hello? I'm in the sauna! Someone, please open the door! It's locked from the outside! Hello? Anyone? Let me out! 
The more I struggled, the more I felt my blood pressure building, making my head feel like it was about to explode. And everything just kept getting hotter and hotter the more I moved. I realized that freaking out was just going to make my situation worse, especially when I noticed that the sauna coals, which were electrically heated, hadn't been turned off. I sat down on the bench feeling hopeless, but with every second that passed, the room only became hotter and drier. My vision began to get blurry, and I was struggling to get enough oxygen to stay awake. I don't know how long I held out, but I eventually passed out. The next thing I saw was my friend huddled over me, trying to shake me awake. My heat stroke was so severe that I couldn't even speak. I was fading in and out of consciousness throughout most of my trip to the hospital. Thankfully, I was able to make a full recovery after a day or two in the hospital. While I was there, my friend tried to explain what happened. He said he saw the employee doing his closing tasks, but he didn't realize that entailed him locking the sauna. When he left to go home, he saw the guy just killing the last last few minutes of the clock on his phone before leaving shortly after. When I didn't show up to lunch between classes the next day, he got worried enough to come check on me. I just can't imagine what I would have turned out like had my friend not come to rescue me. As a freshman in college, I would hit up the gym after class on a regular basis. The best part about the gym I went to was the sauna. I've never considered them, but after I saw a fitness guru on YouTube rave about them for a 20-minute video, I was convinced. I would stretch, do a few sets of everything, run some cardio, then finish out the day with some decompression in the sauna. Another nice part of the sauna was that it was hardly ever used by anyone but me. But on this one day, something strange occurred. I remember seeing someone stare through the small window in the door at me. He entered the sauna and awkwardly sat across from me. He was a pale, scrawny kid with a long pointed jaw and a creep's facial structure. My mood was immediately ruined. I could tell by the way he was looking at me that he was going to annoy me. I tried not to let it phase me though. I gave him the benefit of the doubt by acknowledging him with a nod. I didn't like the way he just kept staring without responding. Hey. The little creep flashed his plague-ridden teeth with an overdramatic smile. Then, he got up and sat right next to me. I was instantly put on the edge the moment he invaded my personal bubble. I tried shifting away a few inches, but he scooted closer to me and closed the gap, so we were touching shoulder to shoulder. I was mortified, holding back my instinct to deck this guy right in the face like I would have done in high school. Hey, I'm Aaron. Cool. Can I call you daddy? <laughs> All right, nope, nope, that's it. Screw you. I had to get out before things turned physical. I was bummed about missing the sauna, but when I got home, I meditated until I calmed down. I turned in early and started the next morning refreshed. I attended class and took my usual seat, waiting for the lecture to begin. It only took about five minutes for me to notice that I was being stared at. My intuition was screaming at me to look around the room. I found out it was because the same creep from the night before was sitting in my room, just five or six seats to my left. When we met eyes, he flashed another disturbing smile. I looked away immediately and ignored him, but I don't think that freak looked away from me for a single second of the lecture. Ten minutes before it ended, I couldn't take it anymore. I got up abruptly and left without a word. Since I had about two hours before my next class, I decided to go to the gym before the creep got there. I did my usual routine and then finally got into the sauna alone. I breathed a sigh of relief leaf, closed my eyes and let the steam do its thing. Not even five minutes later, the door opened, and that same kid walked into the sauna. I was stunned, but before I even had time to react, he sat down on my lap and then started saying creepy stuff into my ear while I held back the urge to curb stomp him. Hey, Daddy, I bet you left class early because you got excited to see me, right? 
I pushed the creep off to the side and gave him a death stare. I balled my fists up, ready to strike, but I pinned them down with every ounce of my willpower. Not the talking type, are we? What's your number, Daddy? And I'm not talking about inches. I'm talking about your phone number. Come on. There are other places we can sweat besides this dingy sauna. <gasps> Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! I couldn't take it anymore, and I stormed off and went straight home. The next morning, I skipped class and went straight to the gym, figuring that there would be no chance of that guy being there. For my whole set, I saw no sign of him. Excited, I got into the sauna and postured myself for some meditation. But, of course, within 30 seconds, he barged in and sat across from me. I didn't even have time to open my eyes. I knew it was him. I kept them shut and outright ignored him. Hey, Daddy, what you doing there? I really think you should open your eyes. I think you'll like what you'll see. Please, I'm trying to focus. Just leave me alone. <laughs> oh, Daddy, you're so funny. You're not gonna get rid of me that easily. Finally, I just couldn't take it anymore. I reluctantly opened my eyes just to be horrified by a skinny weirdo wearing nothing but a Speedo. You're sick! Don't you get it? I don't know you and I don't want you! I'll never want you! You're making a big mistake. No one is going to know you like I do. I know everything about you. Like what? Your name is Jackson Harris. You're from Minnesota and you've come to the Chicago area to study business. You live at 240 West Riverside Street, apartment 322. Your parents live if at- If you ever go near my parents, I will pummel you into mincemeat and dump your liquefied remains into Lake Michigan! <laughs> Oh, that was so hot. Suddenly, that kid left the sauna and slammed the door behind him. I was heated for the whole confrontation, but then something strange started happening. I could feel the max setting of steam pouring in through the vents. It was obvious that the kid was screwing with the temperature dial. I tried to burst through the door, but it didn't move. A little twerk was stomping it with his foot. I started banging on the door, screaming while still trying to push it open. Open the door, you little shit! Hey! Someone get this freak away from the door! Help! I was locked into a battle against this guy, but for some reason, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get the door to move much more than an inch. Maybe I was sweating too much, or maybe that guy was stronger than he looked, but after several minutes, I was already getting exhausted. Very soon, I started to lose my vision. It took all the strength I had left just to stand up and lean against the door, looking into the eyes of what I thought would be my embarrassing demise. Moments from passing out, I saw a group of students rush up behind the creep and pull him away. As soon as he wasn't holding the door, my body weight pushed it open, and I fell through, hitting the ground like a sack of bricks. While some of the students were helping me, I could hear the rest of them trying to make sense of what was going on. Unfortunately, by the time I came to, the sicko was nowhere to be found. However, when I reported him to the police, they weren't able to identify him, even based on security footage. They were only able to find out that he had been using a stolen school ID to get into the campus buildings and stalk me. Thankfully, he's never been seen since that day. I never go into saunas anymore. I have a phobia of being trapped in them now. I also have to check on my parents every day, or I start to get worried that he's moved on to them. I was always known by most people as a pretty fit guy, who always did pretty well for himself with the ladies. A lot of guys ask me how I managed to have such chiseled abs, and I'm always open with my secret. Still, even though I'm honestly trying to help people, a lot of people never seem to take me seriously when I say that the best way to cut stomach fat and really accentuate those abdominal muscles, on top of rigorous exercise, is to spend a lot of time in a sauna. Personally, my go-to gym isn't equipped with a sauna. So I go to a nearby spa facility that has an open sauna to its members 24-7. Unfortunately, there's only one other person I've ever seen in the sauna besides me. 
I don't know his name. For some reason, I just try to avoid conversation with him altogether. But I know him well enough by the way he looks that I could recognize him from a mile away. In fact, I'm sure he could be seen from space. He's the biggest, largest, most enormous adjective of a man I've ever seen. I'd almost say he's the most morbidly obese man in the world. If I were enough of an expert in that sort of thing. To be fair, I only say that because the sauna should be big enough to seat eight or more people quite comfortably. But whenever he's in there, there's barely any space left just for me. Plus, he's always in there, stinking up the place with his unwashed crevices. And every time I come back, he smells worse and worse. It's like he never leaves, not even to shower or relieve himself. Recently, it's become a real problem. The smell that hits me when I open the door is like every nasty thing imaginable mixed into a rotting corpse. Like he's just been there forever, letting go of himself and everything he's got stored up in his gigantic body. At this point, there's a puddle of this murky fluid about an inch deep flooding the sauna floor. I don't know what it is, if it's sweat or something else, but I just assume the best. I need time in the sauna or my muscle definition will suffer. So despite the grossness, I waded through the puddle and sat across from him, lifting my legs up off the floor and crossing them once I was seated so they wouldn't soak in whatever that stuff was. I usually try not to talk to the guy, but at a certain point he just got too revolting to ignore. Dude, do you live in here or something? Dude, you really need to start cleaning up your sweat. You're gonna flood the damn sauna if you don't mop after yourself. Just a couple more minutes and everything will be okay. You can leave whenever you want. Yeah, and so can you. Do you ever think about, I don't know, stepping out for a minute and drying yourself off? Maybe taking a shower and giving the staff a chance to clean the place up? Why would I leave to take a shower? Being in here is like getting constantly showered. A sauna and a shower are not the same thing. Get off my case, prima donna! I need to be in here just as much as you do! Oh yeah? Why is that? I gotta lose weight before next summer. Or nobody will be able to see the muscle I've been working on underneath all this. Yeah, sure. Like, that makes any sense. When I knew I couldn't get him to leave myself, I tried asking the staff to kick him out, but they kept saying that any paying members are just like me and that we have to share the facilities. They wouldn't hear anything about the fact he was taking up more space than the average member. Since that didn't work, I tried going at a different time, when I was sure that nobody would be there. But of course, even at close to one in the morning, he was still in the sauna. It was almost like he lived there or something. The puddle from the day before was even deeper and murkier. But I already stayed up past midnight and screwed up my sleep schedule, so I wasn't going to let the effort be in vain. I waded through the mystery liquid again and sat across from the fat man. But this time, it seemed like there was something off about him. He wouldn't quite acknowledge me or look me in the eye. He was wheezing a little bit, and his face was beet red. Uh, hey man, are you alright? Are you stuck in here? Do you need me to call anyone? Like, the cops or something? I already said I'm here to lose weight before summer! Now let me be! Okay, I'm sorry for asking! I tried not to say anything for a while, but I kept thinking about how impossible it seemed for a man that big to have even gotten in the sauna through its rather small door. With every second that passed, the silence became more awkward and the sauna seemed to get warmer. I didn't notice it was on a higher setting when I came in. The steam was growing thicker with each moment, but right as I started to get worried, I noticed that the fat man sitting across from me was staring at me with a manic smile, like he had anticipated for my reaction. Suddenly, I felt the urge to get the hell out of there. I jumped off the bench, and right as I did, I noticed that just in the last few minutes, the puddle of filth and grime at the bottom of the sauna was now up to my ankles. But sure enough, when I needed it to let me out, it was jammed shut. That's when I started to panic. Help! Somebody out there! Help! We're trapped! Just a couple more minutes, and everything will be okay. <laughs> There's no escape. This is your fate. No. It can't be. When I looked down, the flood of putrid bodily fluids was rushing up to my knees. I scrambled looking for a way to get higher up, but the most I could do was run up to the top of the bench, which was already disappearing under the water. What the hell is going on? How are you doing this? <laughs> the man said nothing, only laughed. Then, he began to melt. His immense flabs and folds of fat started liquefying and spreading throughout the water, and he was still laughing, somehow as he transformed into this fleshy blob, like a snowman happy to meet death by melting under a hot sun. 
Soon enough, he was just a formless mass of skin and fat spreading all over the sauna, floating higher and higher as the flood water continued to climb up to my knees again. Even as I stood on the bench, there was nothing in there for me to hold on to. The blob then reached out and grabbed me, pulling me down into itself. I struggled against it, but it was so sticky that I couldn't escape it. I was soon unable to move or fight back. Then it engulfed me, submerging me into blackness. <sighs> At last I woke up. I was just daydreaming, thank goodness. I'm still in the sauna, relaxing by myself and working on my muscle tone. Only, there's that reflection of myself in the lacquer finish of the bench wall across from me, reminding me of the grim reality of just how far I've let myself go. No amount of sweating will get rid of all that. <sighs> Just a couple more minutes, and everything will be okay. Uh, welcome. What's up, my man? Working hard as usual, huh? Not as hard as your mother on the pole. What did you just say? Come on, man. Let's just work out. 